Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on cis loop ligand gated ion channels. In this video, what we're going to talk about is uh, the ligand binding domain on nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Okay, so we're going to talk about the ligand binding domain on uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Ligand binding domain. Okay, so the structure of this video is I'm going to firstly give a little bit of a discussion on uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors and the structure of nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about the acetylcholine binding protein uh, because, in fact, the uh, structure of the ligand binding domain of nicotinic acetylcholine receptors is very similar to uh, the structure of the ligand binding domain of the acetylcholine binding protein, which we find in uh, mollusks. And in fact, most of the experiments uh, which were done to determine the structure of the ligand binding domain of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor were actually done in the acetylcholine binding protein from mollusks. So, as far as um, uh, experimental understanding of how we did this came, it comes uh, as far as our experimental understanding of how we did this is concerned, uh, knowing about the acetylcholine binding protein is important. Okay, we'll then talk about the actual binding site, about how it's got an aromatic nest made up of tryptophan, uh, phenylalanine, and tyrosine residues. We'll then talk about the cation pi interactions and uh, how uh, the acetylcholine binds to the acetylcholine binding protein through cation pi interactions. And we'll finally talk about an experiment by which you can show how important cation binding, uh, cation pi interactions uh, between uh, aromatic residues in the aromatic nest and the um, acetylcholine molecule are. Okay, right. So, uh, let's start off with a discussion of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor then. So, if we draw the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor here, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is a ligand-gated ion channel, and it consists of five subunits, okay? So this is the whole structure here, and basically it's an ion channel, and it's made out of five separate uh, subunits. Okay, so here are the five subunits, the five separate protein subunits which make up the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So the whole thing is a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, but it's made up of all these separate subunits, okay? And the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is an example of a cis-loop ligand-gated ion channel. Now, all cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels have this pentameric structure where you have five protein subunits coming together to make the full uh, ligand-gated ion channel. Okay, now let's take out one of these subunits from the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor and have a look at its membrane-spanning topology. Okay, so if we draw the phospholipid bilayer again here, then the membrane-spanning topology of uh, a subunit of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor looks kind of like this. So here is the amino terminus of the protein here, and then what you have is a cis loop here, which is a fold in the protein structure, hold together by disulfide links, which I'll show just by that line there. And then it straddles the membrane four, four times, okay? And then it has the C terminus of the protein over here. So this is the membrane-spanning topology of a single subunit of this nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. You have to produce five of these and put them all together to make a full nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Now, in the human genome, we have 17 genes for nicotine, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor protein subunits. Okay, so there are 17 genes coding for this structure here, okay, and they all have slightly different sequences of organic bases, and therefore will lead to slightly different amino acid sequences in this protein, which will lead to slightly different proteins overall. So you can produce 17 slightly different uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor subunits. 
Okay, and to help us understand these 17 different genes, and I should make that plural, um, we have put them into families. So we have the alpha subunits, okay? And in this family, there is the alpha 1 subunit, okay? So this is a gene which codes for a protein which can be used as a fifth of a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, and then it continues on, alpha 2, all the way down to alpha 10. So overall, there are 10 genes of the 17 uh, that are all in this alpha family. Then we continue on. So we'll now talk about the beta family. In the beta family, we have four genes. So we have beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, and beta 4. Those are four genes which all encode for separate um, slightly different sequence polypeptides, which can all function as a fifth of a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. And then finally, you have the gamma, delta, and epsilon gene. And those aren't families, those are just single genes. So now if you count all of these up, we've got 10 here, 4 here, that makes 14, 15, 16, 17. That's the 17 genes. Okay, so you've now got these 17 genes which can be used to make uh, protein subunits of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Right, so there is a huge scope for making a huge number of different nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Some of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors you make will have the same subunit in all five of these slots, basically. An example is the alpha-7-5 homopentamer. So when you use the same uh, subunit, same one of these 17 genes to make the protein that you put in all five sockets, it's known as a homo Pentama, okay? Pentama just means uh, five-membered structure. Homo means same, so it's our, our pentama made up of the same uh, protein five times, the exact same protein five times. Okay, and this alpha-7, so you use the alpha-7 gene here within the alpha family, you make it five times, you put them all together to make an alpha-7-5 homopentama nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. And this is found a lot in the CNS. It's highly present in the CNS. Okay. Uh, another key example is the sort of nicotinic acetylcholine receptor that you find in uh, the skeletal muscle. Okay. So in the skeletal muscle, the, uh, I'll just put skeletal muscle, skeletal muscle, and it's found at the neuromuscular junctions for the skeletal muscle cells, okay? The type that you would find is what's known as the alpha 1, 2, okay? Beta 1, delta, epsilon, heteropentama. So you can see here, we're using the alpha 1 gene, and we make two of those, Okay, we then use the beta 1 gene here, then we use the delta and the epsilon gene as well, and we put all of these together to make a pentamer, and this is clearly a pentamer which has uh, different uh, genes encoding the different uh, subunits of the pentamer, so it's a heteropentamer. Now, uh, this is the f isoform of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor that you find at the skeletal muscle cells. And let me just show you uh, the arrangement of these uh, different um, protein subunits in the receptor. Okay, so if we draw the view of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor from above, what it will look like is this. So we'll have these five different protein subunits coming together like so, one, two, three, so far, five. And then uh, what you'll have is you'll have the two alpha-1 subunits positioned like so. In between them, you'll have the epsilon subunit there, the beta-1 subunit will be up here, and the delta subunit will be here. Okay, so that's how uh, these uh, subunits are positioned relative to one another in this alpha-1, 2, beta-1, delta, epsilon, heteropentama. And I should just mention that this is the adult form of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor that you find in skeletal muscle cells. The fetal form of this uh, receptor that you find in skeletal muscle cells is the alpha-1-2-beta-1-delta-epsilon-heteropentamer. 
delta gamma heteropentamer. So basically, just replace this epsilon subunit here with the gamma subunit instead, and then you have your fetal form of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, so there are other very important examples of nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Another important example is another CNS form, okay, CNS, uh, and this is the um, alpha-4-2, beta-2-3 um, heteropentamer, again, because you've got different uh, genes. This time you've only got two different genes coding for subunits uh, which you're using in your pentamer, but it's still not uh, a homopentamer because a homopentamer you'd require five exact um, same proteins in all five slots. Okay, so the heteropentamer uh, here, and basically let me show you the um, orientation of these relative subunits relative to one another in this. Uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So again, let me divide this into the five different pieces. One, two, three, four, five. And what you'd have is you'd have the two alpha-4 subunits, like so, and then you'd have the beta-2 subunits in between them, like here. Okay, and then the final important, sub uh, important uh, example of a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is the ganglionic form, which you find in autonomic ganglia, in the postsynaptic neurons of autonomic ganglia. Okay, and this is what's known as the alpha-3-2, beta-4-3 um, heteropentamer again. Okay, and this basically has the same structure as this one here, basically, because as you can see again, it's got f two of one and three of the other. So basically, replace the alpha-4 here with the alpha-3 subunit, and replace the beta-2 subunit with the beta-4 subunit, and you've then got uh, your ganglionic nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, right. So, basically, let's see the where the... Um, acetylcholine binds on these acetylcholine receptor, uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors that I've shown you as the key examples within the body. Okay, well basically in both these two receptors here, because we've seen that these two effectively have the same structure, um, you've just replaced the alpha-4 with the alpha-3 and the beta-2 with the beta-4, there are two acetylcholine binding sites, okay, and these are as follows. You have one acetylcholine binding site there and one acetylcholine binding site there. So it's between the alpha-4 and the beta-2 subunits, like so. Okay, so you have two overall acetylcholine binding sites. In the skeletal muscle isoform, it's very similar. You have an acetylcholine binding site uh, here between the alpha-1 and the epsilon, or potentially the alpha-1 and the gamma, if we're talking about the fetal form. And you also have an acetylcholine binding site between the alpha-1 and the delta subunit. For the alpha-7-5 homopentamer, it's slightly different. Okay, so you might be able to guess this just from the rotational symmetry of the structure, because it's going to be perfectly rotationally symmetric. So where should the binding sites be? Okay, so have we got five now? This is alpha-7, 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 alpha-7. So if we follow the pattern of the fact that they're going to be between subunits, then you just can't say that it's going to be this one and, let's say, this one. Because why wouldn't it be this one? Because this is exactly the same structure as you've got here. So in fact, this, sub, this um, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor has five acetylcholine binding sites on it, one between every single one of those alpha, uh, of those um, interfaces between uh, two alpha-7 subunits. Okay, right, let's finally in this video just discuss acetylcholine binding protein. So acetylcholine binding protein is not a membrane-bound receptor. It's a structure that is found in mollusks, which is a free structure which again is pentameric, okay? So it has five 
proteins uh, making up its structure. So I'll show it here. But it is not membrane bound. It's a free molecule. Okay, and you have five identical proteins in all five of these sockets. So it's a um, homopentamer. It's called the acetylcholine binding protein homopentamer. Okay, and basically you can bind acetylcholine in the gaps between these adjacent proteins in the acetylcholine binding protein homopentamer. So, in the acetylcholine binding protein homopentamer, you have five acetylcholine binding sites. One, two, three, four, five here. So, an acetylcholine can bind in each of these. So, it's actually very similar to the alpha-7 homopentamer over here. Um, and, in fact, the structure of the ligand binding sites in uh, this acetylcholine binding protein, they are almost identical to the structure of the ligand binding sites in the alpha-7 homopentamer. And in fact, all of these ligand binding sites, even though these skeletal muscle isoforms and this other CNS isoform and the ganglionic isoform only have two uh, acetylcholine binding sites, the structure of these binding sites and the way that they bind acetylcholine is the same. And it's that way that they bind acetylcholine that we will study in the next video.